Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about this guy, the M52 French Mess Kit. I'm going to show you a few things here on the tabletop and then we're going to go take it out to the woods and cook a little bit out there. So sit back and enjoy this review. Okay, so to bring you a little history about this, these French mess kits, this is the M35, which was the older mess kit that was before this one. Um, pretty neat design, kind of like a, very much like the German, Russian type kit, except it's, it's rectangular shaped here and not, uh, not kidney shaped like those, but they ceased production of these during World War II and then after the war around 1952 is whenever the army was outfitted with these mess kits this particular one was made by Famot and there's no date on it anywhere it just says aluminum pure is what I'm guessing the ALU and the PUR is that's made of pure aluminum by Famont. Uh, I've heard that they've made these up until the turn of the century and and then it was replaced by the this this one was replaced by the kit that they currently use in the in the French army. Okay now for a little bit more of the features on the outside here is a nice handle fit two fingers through it and I would assume that's for attaching it to the soldier's pack or, or hanging it up somewhere in camp um, to keep it out of the way. And that's a nice little feature. Um, take a few measurements here. Including the little side handle here that sticks out on the end. It's about a little less than 7 inches long by five and one eighth inches wide okay that gives you a little bit of an idea of the basic kit size okay uh, it weighs I use my my scale here and it weighs the full thing is 19 ounces or 541 grams that's the whole kit okay <clears throat> So it's a little bit heavy for those distance hikers, but it's very durable for car camping or, you know, little short trips that you're not going to be walking for days. Okay, so it has a, a handle that unfolds. Notice the hole here that matches up with this one. That's pretty cool. Keeps it latched from popping loose on you. Okay, open it up. Turn it over. And you get you get a nice deep fry pan. Okay, that's about an inch and three quarters deep, measured on the outside. Okay, yeah, about the same on the inside. Okay, really nice little pan. It's the gauge. I can't tell you the thickness, but you can see there it's a it's a nice gauge metal. About a sixteenth of an inch, I'm guessing, just trying to hold that up there and film this. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is another pan that is actually deeper than that one. That one's two inches deep and slightly smaller. It's six inches long by about four and a half. And it also has its own handle that folds out. Okay, nice, nice gauge uh, 
of aluminum also okay so it's pretty heavy duty you can see it's been used and there's not very many dents in these things because they've got a nice gauge of aluminum then lastly you're left with this pan which could be an additional cooking pan or something to prepare food in um, or you could eat out of it as your plate also it's got this indentation here made into it so it fits the little pan like that it's a lid for this smaller pan which is very nice okay so that's all three pieces of the kit okay so for just one more little thing to try to help you here is a USGI meat can, one I use a lot, and to just kind of give you a reference, move some of this out of the way, here's the USGI pan, here's the larger pan beside it, so you can kind of see in size comparison the difference between the two okay then here's the smaller pan which basically fits inside the, the larger pan but it's definitely not as tall look at the difference in thickness so you can fit a lot more into this print kit than the American GI one so let's go out. I'm going to take you out to the uh, woods now with me. And uh, we're going to cook up a little something over the fire. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so to reveal what I'm going to be making today. First off, I'm going to be using the 1952, I think it is, the M1952 French mess kit that I've already talked about. And we're going to be making a childhood favorite, especially of my wife's when she was growing up. It's called Hole in Ones or Egg in a Hole. I've also heard called uh, that before. Basically, what we're going to do is take a piece of bread, take out the center, and butter it like we're going to use toast, like we're going to toast it in this pan. But as it's toasting, we're going to drop an egg right in the middle. And that's what it's called uh, egg in a hole. Or hole in one, whichever you grew up learning about, okay? So let me get this all ready to go and we'll get started. Okay, so I was looking I forgot to bring something to uh, cut the hole in the bread. So my brother-in-law had one of his Diet Coke cans he was about to pack out in his pack. And I thought, well, let me use this rim for this. So basically what you need to do is, is set your bread down, take your cutter, which in this case is a Diet Coke can top, and remove the center just like this, okay? Save this piece. My wife says that's the best piece because you can toast that along with the rest of it. Then I'm going to take some margarine I brought from home. And I'm going to butter one side of it okay then get my dirt out of this we're going to put it up here on the fire and get our skillet warm I'm going to add uh, I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil after I drop the egg in so it doesn't stick so let me get this going here let the skillet warm up and then we'll drop it in Okay, so here we go. I oiled the bottom of the pan a little bit. I'm just going to add just a little bit. We'll just keep it from sticking to this mess kit. Not much when I drop the egg in. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so I can see now I didn't cut the hole big enough around. There's a large egg. You can see it soaking into the bread. Hopefully that won't affect it, but we'll see. Okay, so you can see that the egg now getting pretty well done on the bottom. And I put my other little piece I cut out in there. Um, also, I salt and peppered it off camera. So let's see if we can flip this thing over without making a mess. I think I'm going to drop a little bit more oil in there when I pick it up just to make sure that the egg doesn't stick. Now yeah, here we go. Oh man, that looks good. Man, look at that. That's awesome. Ooh, and the little pieces brown it up too good. Yeah. Man, that is cool. Okay, so we're going to keep it cooking. I'll show you what it looks like when I take it off. Alright, so let's take a look here. It is sticking a little bit on the bottom, but not too bad. And let's flip it over. Okay, we could probably cook it a little bit more. But the egg seems done, so we're going to call it done. Okay, and then our little piece here. Turned out really good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I brought some extras and we're going to change it up just a little bit. I got some more bread, I got some instant grits, and then so what we're going to do here is, is I'm going to see about making an omelet. My wife likes it with the egg hole in the middle because she says whenever you cut it, the yolk runs and you can dip the bread in it. So I thought I would try making an omelet with some peppers and onions and a little bit of bacon I got over here for the next one. So let me get it going, see how it turns out. Okay, so here is the next piece. Notice I made the holes a little bigger because I got extra stuff to go in there. Mmm. Some onions, some peppers, and some bacon pieces, and a little bit of sticks. <laughs> so we're going to put this in here. I'm going to drop a little bit more oil right there in the middle. There we go. And here we go. Another stick right there. Oh my goodness. If it's not good, it ought to be. Now I'm just going to add a little pepper. And a little bit of salt here. No, I forgot to butter that side, so I'm going to have to do that after the fact. I'll probably wait until this gets uh, cooked a little bit more, and I'll butter the edge of this bread. Man, that's going to be good. Okay, so now we're going to try to flip this thing over. I don't know how it's going to look on the bottom because I didn't quite get it over, but we'll see. Alright, let's flip this thing over and see what it looks like. Oh, son. That's going to be good.
All right, so here we are. Eggs in a hole. I'm going to try out the solid one where it has that solid egg and then also with my uh, omelet style with bacon, onions, and peppers in there. I got some uh, instant grits. And finally, some instant coffee in my canteen cup. So here's the end of the review for the French mess kit. Um, I think it's a really good kit. It's, it's, if you're going to be going out and doing a lot of frying, like frying up some bacon or things like that, this thing is perfect for that because you get a plate or an extra cooking utensil. You get this smaller skillet and Jonathan, can you hand me that one back there? It should be cooled off. The one I was cooking the uh, actual uh, eggs and bread in. Right here. So my bottom's pretty smutted up, but that's okay. So anyways, uh, appreciate you taking time to watch. Uh, if you don't mind, if you liked what you've seen, uh, click subscribe and give me a thumbs up for this video. I really would appreciate it. It helps me uh, feel good about what I'm doing. And if you got any comments about uh, what I showed today, <coughs> what I talked about, just uh, leave it there below the video. And uh, I try to answer everyone's comments. So thanks and have a great day.